Hi, Algebra people. Here we go again. Today's lesson two, uh, if you're using that, what color is this? Blue map book with the picture on the front, camera on the front. We're going to be uh, starting on page seven today, so that might be a good thing to have out, actually. Definitely should do that. What else? What else? So you're probably going to want to have some homework paper available to you, which you got from class. Um, today you need your um, your uh, handy dandy notebook to write down notes in. And I don't know. I don't know what else. So some random remote control or something. Um, maybe something to blow up your chair. <laughs> What are we? All right, never mind. You don't need that. Okay, lesson two is about understanding variables and expressions. Welcome to algebra. Okay, and algebra is more abstract than just regular arithmetic where you're just adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Basically, most of the things you've done before algebra were things like that. Now we're going to introduce we're going to introduce variables, which is one of our vocabulary words here today. We're going to introduce letters that are going to represent a number. We're, we don't know what the number is. We're just going to say when we know what that number is, then we can find out the exact value of a particular expression. Expression. An algebraic expression. Okay, so why don't you write down, well, it's all over here, this list of uh, vocabulary words. They are bolded in your book. But if you're watching this without the book or just visiting, hi, then uh, then yeah, pause this and, and write these down. I'm going to keep going because you can pause and stop me talking. I'm going to keep talking. Variables, constants, factors, coefficients, and terms of an expression. Okay, we're no longer going to be dealing with just a number or a fraction or a decimal, added, subtracted, multiplied, divided to another one of those types of things. We're throwing in here some letters, okay? Or really, any symbol that's not a number would, would be just fine. You, you could do a hashtag, for crying out loud, to represent a variable. It's just typically in math they've used A, B, C, and X, Y, Z are the most popular uh, variables that are used for, for math and geometry and stuff. Okay, so uh, variables would be a letter that represents, or a symbol maybe, that represents um, a number or a value, okay? The book says, uh, used to represent an unknown number is called a variable. Okay, and we put maybe a variable all by itself, or a bunch of variables, or variables to, to powers, or variables with, with uh, numbers in the front, and we have what's called an expression, okay? Uh, Algebraic expression. Expressions do not have equal sign. They're not equations to solve. They just sit there all by themselves on the page and say, look at me. I'm an expression. And you're like, wow, that's cool. I like that expression. I can make expressions like this one or this one or this one or this is the one I usually see. That's a, to me, that's an algebra class expression, but not in a, a def, defined as, as what we're doing here today. Okay, so I've got over here, right here, right, right there, uh, 2x. That is an algebraic expression. It has actually two things multiplied together. I want you to know, just for convention's sake here, that we're not really going to be using x to represent multiplication anymore. We can put these things right next to each other, and that means multiplication. So this means 2 times something. 2 times something. You could, you could make that something whatever you want to. Apples, or bananas, or pineapples, or Justin Bieber songs, but please don't do that. Don't do that. 
and be a whatever. Two uh, times something, somethings. Um, maybe it's a number, maybe it's a whatever, I don't care. Uh, just use your imagination. Okay, and so the two part is the variable. And, oh, sorry, the x part is the variable, and the two part is called a constant. The reason for that is that two is two is two. It's two. It's two. But the x could be two or four or six or eight or pi or negative one or square root of two or 17. It could be whatever. It, it's variable. It varies. It could be anything. Just for right now, we're just saying it's something. We'll figure out maybe later. Maybe we never will, and you have to be okay with that. Um, maybe you never find out what x is, and you never get like an answer for a number. Maybe 2x is your answer. Each of those pieces, because they're being multiplied by one another, is called a factor. Factors are the pieces of, of an expression that you they get multiplied together. Okay, and when you take a big number like 8 and you break, well, 8's not really big, but you know what I mean, a composite number that's uh, made of smaller numbers and you divide it out and say, well, 8 is actually 2 times 2 times 2. Those are called their prime factors. Okay, so factor is a multiplication word. Um, again, no longer saying uh, x for times. We might use a dot. You see that? Or sometimes you can use parentheses. That means multiplication as well. Or just like I said, slop them right next to each other with no signs in between. And that tells me we're going to do multiplication and that each piece there is called a factor. Okay. Factor. In, in this particular uh, expression 2 and x, 2 multiplied by x. Uh, the constant that sits in front of the variable is given a special name. It's called the coefficient. Coefficient. It's always the, the constant or the, or the number that comes with the variable. Okay. You could have it all by itself and it would just be a constant. But uh, because it's sitting in front, it's telling us how many of these things there are, is called a coefficient. It always goes with that number. All right. And lastly, a, um, an algebraic uh, expression can have more than one part. It can have more than one part. It could be 2x plus 3. It could be your expression. Remember, there's no equal sign here, so there's nothing to solve. It's just there it is, 2 times something plus 3 just is. Or maybe we would say 2xy plus 7z. And if we knew what x, y, and z were, we do the multiplication, the addition, and get a value for an answer. But we don't really care right now. We're just like being abstract here. 2xy plus 7z is, is a, an expression. And it has, it has two parts. Okay, so uh, this is one part, and this is another part, and you can see the parts are separated by some instructions, a plus, a minus, something like that that separates, separates the two parts. This part is called a term, and this part is called another term. Each of the parts of an expression are called terms of the expression, and because this one comes in front today, this one's the first term, and this one's the second term. I know this is like severely stressing your brain, but there we go. That's what we're looking at. There are two terms of that expression. Um, you should try to write something with three terms. Okay, you're going to have a constant and maybe um, something, a variable to a power with a, with a coefficient in it. And then let's put another one. Let's be dangerous. And I'm going to separate it with a minus. And I'll go 3xya, just to be saucy there. I've got an algebraic expression with three terms. There's the first term, second term, third term. Here, this term has three variables. Its coefficient is negative 3, or maybe just 3, but it's being separated from the other term by, uh, by that negative sign. Here's my second term. It has a variable, just one variable, to a power, but that's okay. That's like just means x, x. There's this coefficient. 
And then you got this term here, the first term, which is a constant and it's all by itself. So today we're just kind of defining the terms, okay? Understanding these variables and expressions. Expressions do not have equal signs. They're just going to be uh, letters or numbers or a combination of those. And then maybe you'll have one or more of those separated by instructions like plus or minus. Really quickly, just to kind of flesh everything out here, let's, uh, let me draw you a Venn or an Euler diagram. Oh, you know it is a Venn diagram. We did it the other day with, um, with the different kinds of numbers systems that we use, number sets. And so we, we do have some overlap in uh, the vocabulary. Okay, and so in the first ellipse here, I'm going to write the word term. We said that this has a variety of terms. An algebraic expression can have an infinite number of terms. Well, I guess it couldn't have an infinite number, then it would never be done, right? You could have a thousand terms in it. You could have a thousand pieces of it. Okay, now we also use the word variable. And a variable very possibly could be sitting all by itself, like just the letter X, and be a term, okay? It could be all by itself and, and be a term. Or it could um, be with other things and be part of one of those. So variable and term have some overlap, but some places where they might be different. Okay, another one of our words was our constant. Constant would have been like the number 2. If it's sitting it there all by itself, it is a term. But if it's smushed next to a variable to make a term, these two things together to make a term, well, then that 2 is functioning as a coefficient. It has a special has a special role that is playing in that expression. And then we also have that word factor. A factor would be one of the pieces here that's being multiplied together to make, make the expression. So you can see here we got a factor could be the coefficient, but maybe it's not. The factor x is not a coefficient, but the factor 2 is. So there's some overlap. There's where they could be the same thing. There's where they could be different things. And there's a little bit of overlap here between a factor and a variable. Again, a constant and a variable could be a factor all by itself. They could also be a term all by themselves. But if you put these two together, one of them is going to be the coefficient and one of them is going to be the variable. And you can have multiple factors in, in making your expression. A lot of vocabulary, but we have to learn how to speak math in math class. Okay, I kind of consider math, mathematics to be, uh, to be a foreign language. It is something that you have to learn. It has very specific definitions in this particular um, realm in, in there. So when we use a word like factor, we're not talking about the X factor, like it's a, this show about you know entertainers and stuff that get voted on. Um, expression, you know, I go like, here's an expression. This is like a mathematical expression. No, we're talking about other stuff that we're going to put on the board. So we need to be able to talk to each other in this uh, mathematical language and know what we're talking about. So very important that you get that list of vocabulary, that you understand what these words mean. And as you look at the problems in the lesson, they're basically going to ask you, which one's the third term? And on the third term, which thing is the variable? Uh, which thing is the coefficient? Is there anything that's just a variable by itself? What's the constant? Um, how many factors does this term have? They're going to throw those words out at you, and you need to be able to talk some math. Okay, that's for uh, all for lesson two, at least the basics. The rest of it you can round out by looking at your book or asking a live person in a classroom something about that. Good job for sticking with this through 14 minutes and 34 seconds of me talking. We'll see you next time. Oops, I didn't push the right button.